Hello everyone and welcome to the Mars Perseverance launch in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. It is my hope that the third time will be the charm in this case. I fixed all the basic model issues that I thought I would need to fix, including replacing MMH and NTO with Hydrazine. I think that's doable and I think that's more likely to be the correct propellant for the cruise stage and the sky crane. And so it's all a matter of getting the entry right and we will be using KOS for that so I don't have to do that but KOS might get it wrong too because it's all down to my programming so anyway I have programmed the launch so let's get things started and then we'll transfer it over and see what happens so running Atlas 5 with the KOS script of course we can do it in cinematic style, though I'm horrible at cinematics, of course. And off we go. Atlas 5, 541. On the way to Mars. Unfortunately, we don't have quite the right launch complex here right now. Since you've seen it launch before, I assume that you don't need the numbers to verify that I'm doing everything all right. Otherwise, I do tend to be interested in making sure that everybody knows I've done it legitimately. Okay, we should be going through maximum dynamic pressure here. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. We have the thrust tail off on the SRBs. Off go one set and then the other set. All right. Okay, fairing separation. I decided to go with that as soon as I could do it safely. So off they go. All right, separation. I really ought to add separatrons to the first stage. This is a bit awkward. Anyway, off we go with the Centaur. The RCS is just making sure the roll is stable. I will manually turn it off now. Centaur is being a nice little stage here. I expect I'll have to pitch up soon. But the script will manage that this time. And I'm confident we will end in orbit with enough fuel. So no problem there. Okay, we've done the spin to indicate we're approaching orbit. And... The camera spin, I mean. And there we go. We are in orbit. Let me just activate SAS. And program ended. Alright, I'll do the transfer manually. We've got 4,200 meters per second. It shouldn't be too hard to figure this out. We are on the right date, well, at least currently, um, July 30th, though the timing, um, I think it's earlier that they launch. And there's a transit duration of 152 days. That might be too quick. And usually it's like six months, so. But I think we can manage it. Uh, it's probably not too far off. Okay, settling the fuel down. And I guess we'll get cinematic-like. Okay, but we have to go ignition. Okay, the sun is setting on our stage, which is still conducting its burn. And soon we will see the stars. Okay, there we go. Suddenly the skybox is apparent. I'm not too sure how realistic that is, but hey, we'll go with it. Okay, switching to kill rotation, going to the map, focusing on Mars, and we'll see how it goes here. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. Alright, 
we'll need a minor mid-course correction. Actually, we can do... Um, we've got the RCS, so we might as well take advantage of what RCS we have on this stage. We'll still need a mid-course adjustment, maybe. Okay, just bring that periapsis in using the RCS on the Centaur stage. We could use the Cruise stage, too. It's all hydrazine. And we've got what should be plenty of it in the Cruise stage, too. Alright, separation. And we're on our own. Okay, that is the right way. SAS on relative rotation to the sun will be maintained. Oh, we are eclipsing the sun. All right, so. Well, it's a little bit shady and everything. I can't get the bright side of the probe and the earth and sun at the same time. So we'll have to go with this. Now, as far as the little copter is concerned, that was beyond me. I don't I don't know exactly what to do about that part of the mission. Okay, and I'll increase time warp there. Off we go. And I think we have a better chance ultimately to hit the right side of Mars if we go around this way. Okay, we're obviously a little bit in too deep right now. So I'm going to bring us away from Mars a bit. There's Mars. So that's 42 kilometers again. We'll see how that works for us. I'll get closer. This time I will quick save because I don't think that the model itself is going to change. I don't think I've got everything action group that I think I want to have action group, so I'm not anticipating any changes that would require relaunching it. Oh, uh, we should probably do some sort of cinematic thing. Whoa, 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 that's too fast. Okay. Getting closer. I mean, if we came straight down on this side, it'd be nice. It'll be very bright and everything, but sort of going off to the side a bit. So, okay. Um, this is a good height to save, so let me Alt F5 and go Perseverance 1, I suppose. Okay, so we'll have it like this, and then this will still give us an opportunity to change the periapsis if we need to. There's enough fuel in the cruise stage for us to make a change at this height. For now, we're not aiming for an exact location. Okay, so I'll keep the HUD up for this bit this time. If it turns out it works, I'll just load from the quick save and do the cinematics like that. But we want to see the details. So we're not going to drop the HUD. So Perseverance land. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was thinking of doing Percy, Percy landing, but all right, I'll do the full name. Uh, okay. Get the script in. So automatically turning to retrograde. Now the real thing actually has a sort of weight on one side uh, to keep it balanced while the cruise stage is on. But after the cruise stage leaves, it dumps the weight so that it can sort of do a lifting body thing in the atmosphere of Mars and thereby control its descent and where it's going to end up. That's 
Uh, I, I thought about adding a descent mode to this, but maybe to the shell, but I haven't done that yet. If you want to add some weights, of course you can add some weights. Oh, I should turn off SES. Okay, we have separated off the cruise stage very gently. Okay, parachutes are armed. Okay, we have some flame effects, g-forces as we decelerate. And we're upside down, so camera, camera. Okay, we've slowed down. The cruise stage is sort of scooting by us, it looks like, over there. Okay, getting close to where we're going to have the drogue shoot deploy. Drogue shoots deploy. There we go. And this time they are proper drogue shoots. Uh, not one of them being different or anything like that. And full deploy. So the heat shield should decouple once things get a little bit slower. Oh, we have the heat shield and the shell deploying at the same time. That's a bit of a problem. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be like that. But it just so happened that it took a long time to slow down for some reason. Oh boy, what's it gonna do? Well, okay, it's trying. But it's swinging back and forth, that's not good. Okay, well, we're gonna need to try that again, huh? Um, well, okay, well, here we go. Um, here we go again. Uh, uh, oh, wait! Uh, but the, oh, the decoupler is on the wrong way around? Hold on. Hold on, uh, brakes, can we have brakes? Ooh, the ground is shaky. That's not my problem. Jettison, decouple, ooh! Okay. All right, well, you know, while we're here. <laughs> this is not how it's supposed to work, okay? Uh, deploy instruments, I should have action grouped that. Okay, can I move? Um, I think we're black backsliding here. Oh, and fast. Okay, so wait a minute. I wonder why this one's motor locked. I wonder if all the wheels are busted because of the... I mean, it says on launch that... You now, when I brought the rocket out to the launch pad, it said that the, these wheels were busted, but... I remember this sort of quake thing was something in stock, too. That I thought they had fixed. Maybe... Hmm. Curious. Okay, well, we can't seem to turn right now. There's the Mars landscape. Well, I guess we'll get a shot. But the stuttering ground texture isn't helping the whole situation. All right, let me see. We'll load up the quick save and we'll see whether we can do something a little bit better. So technically third time was the charm. But I feel like it wasn't supposed to be the charm. <laughs> um, things went more wrong than they ought to have for it to turn out right, I guess you could say. Maybe we should go shallower then. So 43 kilometers and then we'll skim a little bit further and maybe that'll give a decent gap between the heat shield separation and our shell separation. I'll lower the altitude for the shell separation. Doesn't give us a whole lot of time for everything else though. I hope the vehicle doesn't flip around or anything. Okay, we are in the atmosphere again. Let me jettison the heat shield manually if I feel like it's taking too long. So the original NASA model did have wheels. It's just configuring wheels is something that I haven't done before. And so my model, I have not created, I haven't used the NASA model's wheels to create my own wheels for it. I was hoping that some mod or another would have good wheels, rover wheels. I mean, you think that would be obvious, uh, but... Hmm. 
apparently not so obvious. Okay, nearing drug shoot deployment altitude. There they are. I think we're just in a high location this time. We should have, like, aimed for a lower place. It's just really high, so things are tight. Jettison heat shield. Please don't come back. Oh, close, but okay, we're safe, we're safe. All right, the shell will drop at four kilometers. Okay, and this time we're still oriented properly and it's not wiggling around too much. Okay, well, let's see if the thing can land properly. That's a whole other business. Have not tested that aspect yet. Okay, it's doing the thing. It can't throttle. That might... It takes so long for it to relight, I don't think that's good. Uh, oh, well, okay, well, the, 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 the sky crane going off is fine. Okay, well, the sky crane decoupled it and went off. But it wasn't the softest landing ever. Boy, these little reels are sort of resilient for broken wheels, I guess. Um, I guess they're broken already, so... It's, wow, that's some blur effect there. Oh, did it need to be deployed? No. It's like they're upside down or something. Right? I mean, it looks like they're sort of scrunched up here. Oh, well, wheel status broken. This one's operational. This one's broken. Oh, that's why they couldn't steer. The ones on the outside were broken. Only the center ones are operational. Maybe if we lock... Is it because their motors were locked and the others weren't? Hmm. Well, I can sort of skid off to one side or another. It's like slewing. Okay, okay, so the other wheels are broken. Were they broken beforehand or... Were they broken on the rough landing? Okay, well progress, progress. We've made some progress. Okay. And, but it's, it's just the high terrain that's causing a bit of a problem, but I guess if we let the heat shield go right there, it may not collide with this, but it was a close call. Hmm. Okay, looking at the configuration, I did allow for the Sky Crane's engines to throttle down. I don't know if they can or not, but um, since that's the case, I'll toss in a condition for that and see what happens. So it'll try and throttle instead of just locking the throttle to full. I don't know if that's a good thing or whether it's going to throw things even worse off. We'll, we'll see. Um, 43 kilometers seemed good for us. Obviously I'm not using the Sky Crane's like lowering rope or something like that. That'd be nice and gentle. You could do that with KAS I think, but I did not attempt to implement that feature. Okay, well, the cruise stage has separated. I could turn to it and use its RCS to push it away, but it separates so nicely that I don't feel like it. Just sort of floats away. And it doesn't come back to hit us either. So, let me prepare to jettison the heat shield again. By the way, the RCS puffing like this is no problem. They're not exactly the most powerful RCS thrusters and they don't consume the fuel very quickly. Uh, all the more reason to make sure that it's not tumbling all about before the... the cruise... no, the Sky Crane does its business. Okay, and... I will prepare to jettison the heat shield at an appropriate time, which will hopefully be a safe time. Uh, 
again the shell the couples at four kilometers that's in the script four kilometers true altitude above the ground so I figure that the deadline for the heat shield is five kilometers okay go that way oh it hit us it hit us in the butt oh no this is gonna complicate matters we're wiggling you can see and okay uh, can you sort of ride that I don't know why does it always have to be so complicated I think it's drag is complicating the ability of the sky crane to orient though Oh god, no. Go away. Okay, it's off, but we're it's just a little bit late though. But at least it sorta of helps slow us down more, but no. Uh yeah, this is not gonna be good. Uh that alone imparts so much sideways velocity and the little nozzles on the sky crane don't gimbal, so somehow the rover will survive because it's been doing that for some reason oh i've got to check the wheels anyway well they're busted now <laughs> oh it, it, it did die okay so there is a condition where the rover actually dies okay oh i hear skidding all right we'll try again okay by the way uh, the heat shield should be able to separate at the, that velocity. We're separating it off at 130 meters per second. According to the launch press skip, the heat shield actually separates at 160. So they separated it off faster than I'm separating it off, and that's at an altitude of 7 to 11 kilometers, according to the press skip. Um, so, yeah. Darn it far. <laughs> Why can't the heat shield separate and not hit me in the rear end like that? Okay, so first of all, these wheels are already broken. They were broken when I brought them out to the launch pad. The center ones are operational, but the edge ones are broken for some reason. Maybe they're too close to like the heat shield collider or something, but there should be enough room. I mean, uh, the motor lock was locked on the ones that are operational, and it was not locked on the ones that are broken. So maybe that's it. So I'll have to relaunch this again, but but that's hope. That's hope. Uh, if we relaunch it again with the wheels locked, maybe they'll still be operational. But first, I'd like it to land softly this time. I'll give it one more go. Now, if you want to keep the MMH and NTO version of this contraption, you should just keep those. Those are were linked in the previous videos, but it'll be overwritten by this hydrazine version, but I think the hydrazine version is fine and probably more accurate. And undergoing rapid planned deceleration. Okay, drogue shoot deploy imminent. There they are. I wonder if releasing the heat shield while we're still at a larger angle would help. Like, it'll go off to the side more, like that. Well, they said 160. Uh, let's see, jettison. Uh, uh, nope, it still hit us. Oh, but, but, is it gonna go off? Come on, go off, go off! You can do it! Yes! Okay. <laughs> and now, maybe the cruise stage has enough time to slow our rocking down? Not a cruise stage, shell with the parachutes. Okay, well, the shell is off, but maybe we're under good control? Okay, well, now it's about the script's ability to land us properly. Let's see if throttling works for us. Okay, it is throttling, as you can see. But is it a good enough throttling? Not really. 
Uh, still too. Oh, well, it, it thought it was good enough. It did. It does that really fast. Um, <laughs> it doesn't wait around, does it? Um, that's the sky crane again. It happens really fast, but it it properly decoupled from it and. That's the heat shield. Okay, we'll have to use the map. So clearly we have to start the retro burn for landing a little bit later than it's currently doing. And I need to maybe lock the motor on the wheels initially before launch. But okay, well, you know, here we are. And if we unlock the motors now, we can ride off into the sun, sunset, sunrise, uh, sunset, I think, because Mars rotates the same way Earth does. Wow, we can really get some speed around here. But turning, I mean, we can do it, it's just not very good. Getting some real speed. Let's uh, go to this view and really get a sense of the power of that RTG. Whoa! Alright, so with this image of of uh, Perseverance riding off into the sunset, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.